You just remove this off the screen. So welcome to the second uh, lecture of uh, our little uh, thematic on networks and conflict. Uh, so today, Professor Marcelo is going to pick up on another topic uh, after he had uh, done some introductory econophysics. We have echo him a bit. And so today he's going to talk about uh, culture and alliance formation from a mathematical perspective. And um, I think he's not going to delve a lot into the math. Mm -hmm, it's going to no. be somewhat general and accessible. But uh, the references to the more mathy material are going to be listed. So we're going to start mm -hmm. on time. And uh, students coming from the Lebanese University would join. Okay, a bit come, I will give this Yes. Part. All right. OK. Well, last time we talked about economics, you know, which is source of conflict. I will summarize for here that naturally commerce generates inequalities okay and when the inequality is very high that's very bad for society okay because poor people realize that some people have a lot of money they will kidnap them they have a revolution you know it's complicated anyways uh, today i won't talk about economics too much mostly about culture so what is culture okay how you guys could define culture for human Tradition, good. Another, another one. A collection of ideals that it's the, the group of people. That yes, about. right. How do you generate them? How do you get that transmitted? Repetition. Repetition could be. Well, we'll see. No? Well, you're right. We'll come to see uh, all these set of different practices. Okay. Actually, also animals. Animals have culture. No? Chimpanzees learn. How to use tools, but you know, we're more complicated. We are a species that have conquered you know, most of the world. So we have many things, rituals, courtesies, you know. And the important thing is that all these things are transmitted through generation. Okay, your parents, your relatives, you know, mostly when you're a kid, you learn Arabic, English, Spanish, you know. So, okay, the point is how cultures are transmitted. How come in all this region people speak Arabic? You know, they have different religions, you know, languages. How come? How how you how we can model that? We can not model with a computer in a very simple way. Okay. Uh, have we heard about the mirror neurons? We have some neurons that specialize in what? Uh, they, uh... Mm -hmm. one by one say it. how 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 reproduce the behavior I do like other people. but how you realize what people do how you realize what are people doing observation observation multiple eyes huh? i think huh? okay and the these neurons you know they are shown to be a source of empathy how will you find empathy? Feeling the emotions of the others. Right, feeling emotions, okay. I, there are some people who are not really empathic. Even though we are naturally in the, you know, having that, why people are not empathic? Which kind of people are less empathic? Psychopaths, very good. <laughs> See, if you live in a very tense atmosphere, et cetera, you know, you lose all these. All these feelings, you know, actually literature and movies and theater are based on the empathy because you identify with that woman, with that guy, you know, because, you know, they do it for purpose, huh? and you feel the same things, more or less, that that person is feeling, okay, without being fighting, you know, it's safer, not to go to the theater, you know, you have feel emotions and you go home and you're safe, huh? you, okay, so, uh, You'll see why I mentioned the mirror neurons, okay? It has to do with culture. Well, having defined what is culture, which is very complicated, I'm going to present a model that's kind of famous, easy, and it's fun, I think. Well, we are going to 
for every culture, select a an arrangement, an arrangement of cultural treats. Right? Here is like a vector, right? But anyways, it's just a ray, okay? For example, in the first part, okay, we have F features. Oh, sorry. Uh, F is in the dimension of this array, okay? And each array has different traits, right? For example, let's talk about language. Let's think that the first entrance has to be with languages, okay? Could be Spanish, Mandarin in China, uh, Hebrew, uh, Nahuatl, who was the antique language of the Aztecs, okay? What else? Which other crucial characteristic you want to choose? That's part of the culture. Something big, important. What else? We can have many. The dimension is F. We can have like 10, 20. Give me another one. Religion, very good. Religion. Religion is important. Religion is a set of rules, okay? A way of seeing the world has to do with ethics. Yeah? The good thing usually about religion is, I think, is the ethical part. No? Treat the others well, you know, help the poor, etc. You know? That's the important thing. But we will fight over oh, stupid things, okay? Like Protestants and Catholics, you know, have terrible wars, you know? But, okay, let's say the second is religion. Another one? Hmm? Rituals? No, rituals, eh? there are so many. Religion, no? Gloves, many rituals. Another one. Different. Ideology. ideology. Political ideology, you mean. Okay. How do you classify them? What is it? So, uh, uh, so maybe not as straightforward as the politics, but they also describe how people will react. So, Okay, last, last, uh, the last talk I will mention that again. We have two dimensions, two dimensions. Right? Could be the part, the economical part, okay, about uh, political ideology, a social part, okay. Economics is how, how you distribute the money, okay. You produce, society produces money, and every part, workers, managers, you know, owners, I don't know. The way you see it has to do with economics and political ideology. But also, political ideology has to do with governments, how you democratic it is, how you elect your representatives. Yeah, it's complicated. But I mean, okay, could be in this sense left, right, and, and center. Another one? Values. Hmm? Values. 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 Well, actually, it's very profound. If you go right, do you know what is axiology? Very important part of philosophy. Nobody talks about it. Axiology is the theory of values. Actually, the ideology is based on those values. Okay, how egalitarian you are, what you think about the other people. If you go to, you went to South Africa, then you say when the apartheid were was superior, you know, it was a fantastic place for the people with Nazi ideology, you know, because depending on the color, you, know, you got the money. Okay. I'm darker, you know, than you are, maybe, you know. So, anyways, so. Fire? Here? Yeah. Better? Better? Or not? So. Okay, anyways, let's start, say something more simpler. Let's put food. Or musical, musical, musical preferences, no? He likes rock, the other guys blues, the other guys uh, Turkish music, whatever, no? Let's have three dimensions, okay? So the point is you have these regions, these persons, how they are going to transmit culture. How do you think it's going to happen? What are the mechanisms? To spread rock, to spread the words of uh, Mohammed or Buddhism. Give me a simple example. Conquering. Conquering, yes. Conquering, well, force sometimes. What else? Something less violent. <laughs> exposure. Eh? Exposure. Exposure. Yeah. exposure. But why you, you like Mexican food or do you like Chinese food, for example? No? Okay. Or why this guy is Buddhist from Christian parents? 
So, okay, let's more or less model this in a very simple way. Okay, the simplest, I think, is by imitation. Okay, suppose you two guys meet, you know, and then they have something in common. And having something in common, then become friends or you convince him, you know, that Christianity is better than to be atheist or the opposite, right? And then we have something in common, there's a possibility that will become more homogeneous. Okay, that like happens with the wife and husband, no? Sometimes I speak to my wife, you know, and she like me, you know, <laughs> so we're different, but they're more homogeneous, no? No? which is good, no? otherwise you have more trouble. Anyways, so uh, we'll follow the following model. Sorry. Okay. Let's put our agents, which could be cultures, regions, people, in a grid, like this, like a chess grid, or so, and we'll have interactions amongst neighbors. So this in the red, this agent in the red, has north, south, east, and west neighbors. And uh, for simplicity, let's think that we have only three components, okay, F equal to three, and uh, the number of possible, possible entries in each one is Q. 10 religions, 10 languages, and 10, I said musical, musical, no? Musical preferences only, which is an approximation because of course, we have much more languages than religions, okay? And the, the idea is that we have a, like, we choose randomly a site here, an agent, and with a one fourth, or the one fourth, he will interact one, with one of the neighbors. So, okay, we have to, yeah, no number. No? From zero to one, then we divide the interval, one fourth. No? And here we have two, two agents interacting. When they have something in common, it's good because they will interact. If you don't have anything in common, you go to a party, that guy doesn't have to do anything with you, you don't even see him, yeah? But if he has something he likes to play tennis, then, ah, you play tennis, ah, good, you know, you play tennis, maybe with my club, no? Or let's have soccer together, whatever, yeah? Then the probability to interact is higher. Here we have this, the, this uh, orange, or blue agent, they, have, they share one third of the features, right? So interact. And the idea is that randomly, one of them is going to copy the other. The first or the second? Who's that? I don't know, random, no? throw it in, no? coin. Who's going to copy who? Doesn't matter. In this case, the blue, the blue no, the orange, copy the blue. So it's a process, very nice process of homogenization. For example, let's do it here. I choose one agent, this one. Choose a neighbor, this one, okay? They share the same second component and the, and the first one, fantastic. They are very, very compatible. But then if they interact, then I have one and two, let's put here two. Here I have a block, a region that is the same. Okay, now let's choose this one with this one. They have the three. So they change component, they look more the same. This and this, for example, they share this one, three here. Okay, this and this one. Look, they share two of them, very good. And this is a three, so it's here a two. This guy is exactly the same. So by doing this in a cycle, okay, the computer, we can check how many agents are in each culture. We have here two with the same features, or two, etc. 
Okay, so let me show you something very nice, I think, with colors. Here we have vectors or arrangements of f equal to three, and only two possibilities, zero and one. Okay, and the nice thing about this is that each vector or each different culture has a color. Here, the last one, we have one, 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 as Newton would say, it's covered, you know, the mixture of all the colors is, is white, and the black is no colors at all, no? Zero. So you have red, green, and blue. This purple is a combination of red and blue, right? Understood? What is the initial condition? Well, we have here, uh, I don't know how many, 100 maybe, I don't know, 100 uh, side by side, 10,000, I don't know. Randomly, we throw the numbers, the colors, right? And this is our initial condition, okay? The computer does all the work, checking neighbors on, we find at the end, of the simulation that the red color has the largest area, right? With this many times, with different, with different values. And we always get more or less the same. We get that there is a culture that dominates, okay? So this model illustrates local convergence, okay? Questions? Understood? Very, very nice, huh? So if we think about languages, for example, I talk about I talked about cultures. Let's think about languages. We have a, a grammar, we have a way of pronouncing things, etc. All right? Many languages are lost. Okay, because there's no many ones. Here the mechanism is totally random. I think you mentioned huh? that. This will be improved, giving preference to some cultures. How? By domination, conquest, what else? Or superior, maybe? The technology, you know, what else? Bigger number, Bigger number you know, my power. This model is, is, not, is linear. Let's say the more the red one is, more power it has. So it can, can improve, okay, on different means. But this is random. And the mechanism is the one I mentioned about the mirror neurons. This is because of the process of assimilation. Assimilation? Because, because assimilation. Because you have, so you have, um, you have several small cores mm -hmm. with features. Um, so I can't do the mathematical terms. And you have a large amount of people who have random uh, features mm -hmm. so they start to slowly turn them one by one uh -huh. and whoever is more successful ends up yes it's like the, both the left right in the center and they both want to take the center more or less more or less yeah yeah, yeah when when wait the funny thing is that it starts randomly in this case yeah. okay maybe in another simulation and we have that the blue is going to win no? but the important thing is that uh, the um the area the amount of agents that are into the major the most important Culture is what the say. That depends on the on the on the on the variables. Okay. Here, for example, I have only three components for each people for each component. My question is: what will happen if I choose if I have more more than three? Here we have only two. The vector is three, two components. Here I have three with three features. What would happen here? Instead of, of three, I would have 20 possibilities, 20 languages, 20 religions. What would happen? It takes longer to convert. Take longer, what else? Less complexity. Hmm? Less I don't know what's complexity. What would happen in the final result? More Complexity, you say, but eh, eh? what? More equal distribution. More equal distribution. Well, it will be it will be more difficult to have a very dominant culture. 
because if I have here, uh, instead of C, A, B, only have X, Y, Q, etc., it will be more, more difficult to, to have similar cultures. So if your culture is, has a lot of variations, a lot of possibilities, it's very difficult to be homogenized. But if everybody eats, eats hamburgers, listen to rock, everybody is, no? So the more rich you are culturally, the more difficult it's going to be that you belong to a dominant culture. You can come here, oh, you can see everything there? Okay, good. Are you coming from the Liberty University? Great, great. It was like, so what we're talking about how, how cultures or languages or many other things like political ideologies are reproduced, okay? So for every, every religion, every culture, we define it by a number of different treaties, uh, characteristics, okay? And the idea is that they are copying each other, okay? And uh, the result is that we'll get dominant cultures, okay? Now, let me see something more complicated. Actually, here we are plotting. Remember, Q was the number of possibilities, right? Right? Q is here in the horizontal axis. Okay. And we're plotting here the maximum culture, the culture normalized by, by N, dominant. Here in the, in the case is black. So as, as I mentioned before, as we increase Q, the size of the largest culture decreases. So what is nice then is that we have something like, this is like a phase transition. Around Q equal to 50 something, 60. Then the size of the more dominant culture is very small. For Q below, the dominant culture. For Q above, we have a multicultural state. Okay, so it's not physics, but it looks like physics because we have a transition. Okay. Questions? Okay, so you have a model that is homogenization. Making, making concursion more, more homogeneous. Well, let me, let me mention another model simpler than this. For those who just arrived from the Lebanese Public University, let's think about opinions. What do you think of this professor? What do you think about this uh, book, right? So you qualify, every person can give a, an opinion about that book about that professor, about a, a given politician. Okay, so let's have an access. Very simple. Okay, I can see here. Okay, this is zero and 10, for example. I want to show you a model of consensus. What consensus means? Everybody agrees, Everybody agrees on what? And how do you agree? Good. Good idea. How do you think it will be the process to reach consensus? How can we reach hmm? Yes. What is normal way? How do you, communication? Okay, you share something. No? You are you are negotiating. For example, now in Europe you have a war. You know, it seems that the United States, who is actually. The, the, the one that is controlling NATO doesn't want to negotiate. They want to, the Russians to suffer. They have a perfect war because they are killing each other, you know? So you have to negotiate, you know? oh, even in families, you have to negotiate. So let's have, a, how many opinions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten opinions. Ten people are giving opinion about anything. Okay. And then how we model the consensus? Well, let's choose two of them randomly. Let's choose this and this. Are they going to interact or not? 
Well, that depends. The, how far it is. Let's define this amount, which is the tolerance. This length, let's call it epsilon, is the amount of tolerance. If you guys are inside that interval, they will talk to each other, they will negotiate, otherwise forget it. Okay, so if this is the distance, this is x, x2, this is x9. Okay, the distance between x2 and x9, if it is less than epsilon, they will negotiate. If it's larger, you are too different from me, you are too far to the right, I'm too far from the left, whatever, I don't talk to you. Okay, so they start. We take two, two of them, nothing happens. Okay, let's choose, let's choose two, two more, these two. Oh, this distance is, is less than epsilon. Good, they're going to talk at least, and what will happen? You want to reach consensus. They will approach. Well, I convince you that this book is not too bad. We will convince me. And let's say they're going to move closer. Okay. So what I choose, I remember this and, and this one, for example. This and this one. So instead of having this, we have let's put them together. Let's put all these together. Okay. So they converge. Can be slower. Okay. So we do this many times. Okay. And Every time you choose two agents, okay? What will happen at the end? What will happen? Those agents, for example, this one. This one is attracted to this one, but at the same time it's attracted to this one. It can move this way or this way. What will happen? We have clusters, all right? So if we do it many times randomly, maybe you want to do something like this. Huh? This guy is too far away. Okay, nobody talks to him, you know, he's an extremist. And then we have like here a cluster. All these guys, we be together, maybe it's two and two. So we have three clusters, right? They reach consensus. Okay. This model can be improved. How? In real life. How do you think it can be improved? What is our opinion? It's simpler because remember cultures were was an array. Every culture was an array of different cultures. Like another like diverse one. Okay. Diversity, you need more dimensions. He have only one dimension. Okay. The tolerance changes. Tolerance, tolerance. If we change tolerance, if we put a very small amount of tolerance, what will happen? That interaction will be very, very difficult. So we have less number of clusters. If the tolerance is very high, maybe you choose another color, this one, it's very high, almost everybody will go to the middle. Okay? So this model, in this model, opinions move. In the ones I showed before that you guys were it's related well components okay like religion culture the type of food they eat etc is yeah, with colors so this is interesting you know what else can be changed besides the tolerance that's the length what else some agents are more important than others when they move if you are in this position in position we approach maybe one guy one agent will move and everybody will be moving towards him. Okay, he's like a leader, a guru, or very, uh, how do you say, Clara? Very, uh, like, I don't know, uh, stubborn. No? The opinion is in church. Okay. Opinate, opinate. I don't know. Okay. So this is a very simple model. Okay. In which agents more or less try to get together. Okay, simpler than the one I just showed. Okay, for those who came a little bit later, let me remind them what culture is. Okay. A lot of things. So we put in the first component of our vectors, 
for example, we wrote uh, languages. Then we could talk about religion, uh, tastes of music or food, and they more or less converge. But in this case, instead of approaching, one component becomes the same. Okay? And we do it randomly, but in real life, what happens is that some cultures are more dominant. They conquer you. For example, in Latin America, I'm from Mexico. Mexico. The G is from Arab, you know? That's conquered Spain. And the G is in the Spanish South, not in the French no? or Italian. So we, most, most of the people in Latin America, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, speak what? Spanish. And what's the dominant religion? Catholicism. Catholicism. In the Arab world, what is the dominant religion? Islam, which are Christians and others. What is the uh, dominant language? Uh, so you guys were less conquered than we were, okay? <laughs> More independent, no? Because we adopted the language and the religion of the Spaniards, no? And the Portuguese, Portuguese were similar. So in, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese, no? which is very similar to Spanish, okay? So opinions about this opinion model and the culture model. What do you think? Which one do you like better? This one? This is more complex, okay? Because it has more records. Okay, so actually here, we're not using mathematics, simply copying. Very simple, no? Imitation. This model of culture works very well in fashion. I mean, if someone has a broken set of pants or, I copy. I, I, I don't know if it's uh, superior or not, no? I just copy. If they have a tattoo, I copy. Sometimes it's kind of irrational. So the, the fashion depends also on exposure. Exposure. If you have a television program and the, the actor is very famous, you do exactly what he does. You know? Okay? Okay, so let me go to another presentation uh, that has to do with culture and conflicts. I move here to... Alliances, okay, and blocks. Okay, the question is, I remember that, you know, I'm much older than you are. I remember that in 2003, the United States led an invasion of Iraq. And we wonder well, why some countries sent troops to Iraq. So let's model that. In countries like Nicaragua, Ethiopia, they send troops. Of course, there was a lot of pressure from a lot of world power that was the United States. So the idea is in the coalition, could be a coalition of firms, companies, friends, you know, but how come coalitions are formed? That's the question, okay? On what depends? What's an idea? in a very abstract way. Political ideologies of people. Political ideologies, what else? Interest. Interest, very good. Geographical. Your position? Yeah, usually neighbors are, don't get along very well. Eh? Mexico lost half of the territory with the United States. Eh? Well, now it's gone, but people were really mad. You know? We lost California, Texas, and Mexico. Eh? And uh, there were terrible wars in Europe, you know, between French Empire, British, you know, Germans. Okay, so there are many, many, many possible causes, no, of friendship and enmity. Okay. So since there are so too many, let's do the following thing. Let us think about networks. Every agent, every country, every region is a node, and they are linked. They interact with others. Okay, and let's put three cases: we are friends, enemies, and what else? Neutral. Okay. Okay. So we have. Two blocks, the blue and the green one. 
okay? And in the blue, we have five, five agents. Five agents could be anything. Eh? Could be criminal gangs in Mexico, uh, narco wars, could be a family feud, whatever. And we have four in the green, okay? And suppose that uh, agent number seven is a very good friend of four. Too bad, you know, because they are his, his, his brother, you know, his cousin. Boy, we are fighting the blue against the green, but we are friends, you know, or, or no, relatives, frustration. So we want to split all your, all our, all our agents that are friendly in one block and the enemies in another. So there are two sets of frustration. Okay. Ideally, friends want to be on the same block or subset. Actually, it's a partition. Mathematically talking, it's a partition. We have different partitions and enemies in different blocks. But in reality, sometimes enemies share the same block. For example, three and six are enemies, and they are in the same in the same block. Or, as I said, my friend is in the block of my enemies. So every time that an agent has to put up with an enemy in the block or has a friend in the other block, it's frustrated. Okay? The opposite of happiness. Right? Uh, okay. So I gave you the main ideas. I didn't write it explicitly, but we have two networks at the same time. Network of friends and enemies. Let me go back to the case of the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Those are, that's a map of the members of the coalition that invaded Iraq. Where are most countries? Where are the, where are the majority of the countries? Okay. Europe. Which part of Europe? Eastern. Eastern Europe. Okay. So there was a counter revolution in Poland, Hungary, etc. And they you were know, ready to join you know, and follow the US orders. Okay. Uh, well, here I have uh, some statistics, you know, that was a very violent thing to do. And many of the people who died also died in Iraq due to the lack of healthcare, et cetera, no? There were no police. So depending on who made the statistics, it was pretty painful for the Iraqi people, okay? According to the US White House, there were these countries, okay? Some, not even countries, some very small territories. And here's a list of countries that sent troops, for example, Honduras is a, country in Central America, very weak, very poor, you know? And by numbers, we have the number of soldiers. Yeah? Some of these countries, for example, sent only 50, 60 policemen, you know, just symbolic. Let's say so symbolic troops, yeah? okay? Okay. Let me mention how good countries behave among themselves. Let's talk about a matrix, which is the propensity of being friends or enemies. If it's positive, it means that we are friends. Sarna is my good friend, we have no collaborations, you know, etc. So it's positive. Okay. The other guy I was in the Mexican subway in Metro, and I was hit by a guy. He said, what happened? That's my enemy, no? for example. So these are agents, number one, two, three. And the components, as you guys mentioned, has to do with many things. For example, let's go one by one. History, OK? Mexico and the US were enemies for a while. Religion, usually it shouldn't be, you know? Usually people with different religions, you know? They don't like each other, you know? They think you, that the other guy is wrong because your God is better. No? Bush, when, when they invaded Iraq, he talked about uh, his, his God, you know? The Christian God and Jesus Christ, right? right? 
Political, here is a mistake, this is political, political, okay? If you think in politics in the same way, it's better to get along huh? with others, okay? Economics, give me an example of economic capacities that are good and bad, this last one. Give me an example in the real world of countries that don't like each other too much, they have different political regimes, but they are very tight. Resources. Hmm? Resources, but they give an example of countries. They have good economic ties, trade, but they don't like each other too much. China and US, perfect. Okay. If you go to an American supermarket, the store, half of the products are Chinese. For different reasons. You know, different reasons because it's more expensive, more cheaper, you know, etc. So, and uh, especially Trump is very much anti Chinese. Democrats, in general, the, in the US are more anti Russia, anyways. But China and the US are more like hooked together in a very important economical hook, yeah? because there's a lot of trade. Okay, and Chinese are very efficient, learning, copying, whatever. No? So everybody depends on China, in a sense. So for every two countries, every two set of people, you can more or less analyze the history, how they think, etc. Okay, and if the components are negative, let's put positive values if they are friends, negative values if they are enemies. Okay then you can more or less check if it's a good relation or bad relation. For example, in the political spectrum, let's divide only by five, no? Possible positions, monarchies like Jordania, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, maybe the left, no? Cuba, no? Ultra left North Korea, I don't know. No? So more or less you classify. Actually, all these, all these numbers are very, very fuzzy. Are not very defined. As I mentioned in the first talk, sorry, you can measure exactly how many middle ears are here. Okay. But how good friends you are, you no, know, depends on how much you talk to each other, etc. So those variables are not very easy to measure. Okay. I mean you can make mistakes always. And it depends on time. Yeah? Well, let's talk about it about physics. Let's suppose we have only two possibilities, okay? There's a field for physicists, could be electric field, magnetic field, that points out in one direction, and you are parallel to that field, you go that way or you go this way, okay? Two possibilities, Pepsi or Coke, okay? In the US, Republican or Democrat, even though there are some parties, Green Party, Libertarian Party, etc. But okay, let's think that there's a field that tries to orient you, send you in one direction, okay? So if we talk about magnetism, we have positive relations. This is a spin, okay? The way you point. Huh? You point the same direction, you're friends. You do whatever I want, and friends, you know, you do whatever I do. And opposite, okay? This is negative. Okay, so people can use experience of magnetism to model human country relations, okay? In the case of the Iraq war, Iraq invasion, there was a field that was very important. What was the field that, or that organized the invasion? Hmm? The field, they have interactions, interaction among all, all the countries, but we have the US who said, well, you know, I don't like this regime, let's try to destroy them, you know, etc. Okay. So you have interactions amongst different agents, but also you have a field that orders very powerful field. No? Mm, okay, let me go to math later on. Okay, so you have these orientations, okay? And you can define, you can define energy. If 
the sign of the sigma has to do with up or down. This is strength, and the idea is to minimize energy. Who has a book around here? A book, a book, a book. You have a book, okay? In physics, we always like to minimize energy. Okay, we have three different, three different positions. It's very stable because the center of mass is very low. I have this one, it's very unstable. Okay, and this one. Okay. So I won't go too much into defining the energies, but the idea is that if you have your enemies, you're going to be in the opposite directions. If you're friends, you have to be with the same speed. Okay. Or oh, sigma stands for the direction. Okay. Sigma up, I didn't write it well. Sigma positive means that you are invading the Sigma negative. Okay. Okay, okay. Let, let me spend some. This is good because, uh, one second. Let's do the exercise, pretty simple. Okay. For example, let's have three agents, okay? A, B, and C. Okay? All of them have a good relation among themselves. So you write the, the network. I don't have another color. No, I don't have another color. Maybe. Okay. They're friends. So let's write these as friends. Okay? This relation of friendship. Okay? They want to be in the same block, right? It is a word. Okay. This line means friends, friendship. Love. Brain chip. Oh boy. Brain chip. Okay, red is bad. Red means enemies. Okay, so if they are friends, they want to be in the same block, right? So you put in the language of sets, A, B, and C together. Fantastic, okay? All happy, okay? If we think about directions, let's put them all A, B, and C parallel. But let's change the relations, suppose, uh, both of B and C have C as enemies. And you, can, you can see from here. Bad relations, okay? C and B hate A. But at the same time, B and C are friends. What is the optimal partition? C together, okay? This one implies that B and C are together and A is the enemy, all right? This is the ideal thing. In terms of magnetism, we'll have that B and C have Coke and A doesn't like Coke, like Petri. These guys are invading Iraq, this one is not invading. What happens if all the relations are bad enemies? What is the best subset partition? What is? Okay, all are enemies. They don't like each other. We have three separated sets. Everyone in his own, okay? We have A. B and C, right? Clear? Let's have another example, only with three agents. This is the most fun
A gets very well, gets along very well with B and C. Okay, but between B and C, there is hate, enmity. Can you write? What is the best partition? Who has paper? What is it? Give me an example. What is the best partition? How we divide people? Let's put together. They like each other, no? A and B. Let's put together A and B together, right? A and B together. And C far away. Who is suffering? Hmm? I can hear. Why? They are friends, no? They are friends, no? B is far away. No. Uh, C is far away from A. See? See? All right. Is there any way people are all happy? One of the company. Okay, so what do we do? We have to count. We have to count. Let's see. Uh, frustration. Let's define frustration when you have an enemy in your camp or you have a friend in the other. So here, here uh, A is frustrated. One point, frustration. At the same time, C suffers frustration because it's far from A. Two. We have two units of frustration. So you guys can work to see, try to try to do it, you know, at home. In the case of three, it's more simple. If you have five, ten, it's complicated. Okay. Sometimes people are not very happy. It's very difficult huh? to have only that depends on your relations. So uh, here frustration is the opposite of happiness. Okay. Right? If the energy is max minimum, that's minimum frustration. So let's put energy. The opposite of frustration. Okay. Now, sorry, sorry, same energy, minimum energy, minimum frustration. Okay. So you can do it in the computer. We have a lot of a lot of uh, nodes, but to make it more complicated, we have that each link has a value, a strength. For example, if the love between a a, B, and A, C is very strong, the best partition will be together, okay? So you can play with the values of the different links, okay? And you get different results. But to do it, for many agents, you have to do something like this, okay? G, remember, J is positive or negative, depending on the, on the relation, and the strength is the S. Um, Monte Carlo will be a proper way of assembling the code. Yes, yes, you can do it. Well, actually, let me tell you, uh, this model you can do it in Monte Carlo, but it has a problem. This, there's something lacking in the in the model about human relations. What is the problem? What is the relation between I and Y, I and, and J, J? It's a problem in the real life. It's not symmetric. Okay. You like me, 10 units. I like you only four. Or it could be that he loves her four units, but you hate him one. Okay? Well, it's more, it's, if you think about the weighted directed sign method, mm -hmm. that's the setting you're suggesting. So their weights, their signs, and their direction. Direction. Yeah, it, it's very complicated. When you have a, well, no symmetric, it's very complex because you don't satisfy like the the Newton's law. For every force there is a so it's more complicated. So let's st stick to symmetric. Okay, the the feeling I have for you is the same feeling for me. Okay, well actually we let me continue with the applications. What is this? So it's not very complicated. It's very easy, but I'm giving you the main concepts. Okay, go back to. Okay, so we have 
blocks, you know? Actually, it's a partition. Let's give an example, okay? This word was applied to the European theater, to the European countries in the Second World War, okay? And you could have two different alliances. The one that was real, that happened, was this one, okay? So the Union allied with only France, etc. And there was a possibility. Another possibility was that the Soviet Union allied with the countries that were Orthodox, like Greece and Yugoslavia, mostly Serbia. Okay, this model was applied to Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is a very interesting country because the Balkans are the border of Muslims because of the Ottoman Empire. Orthodox due to Greece, Russia, and we have, what else? Bosnia, Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Serbian, Orthodox, what else? Hmm? Kosovo, Muslim? Hmm? No, no, this is uh, Yugoslavia. Was, is, uh, Serbia, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia. Slovakia, what was that? It was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Austro-Hungarian Empire were mostly Catholic. Okay, guys. So Lebanon also Lebanon is a border, you know, between different cultures, you know. So these countries are complicated because they have different languages, they have to get along well. They have to use the model of consensus, you know. And Yugoslavia was partitioned using languages religion, political systems, you know, and the partition was almost following the religious border, okay? Because Bosnia-Herzegovina is Muslim, Serbia is Orthodox, like the Russian, Russian, the Greek, the Bulgarian, and the Eastern part, the Western part, sorry, Slovenia, Croatia was mostly Catholic, okay? So religion, which is a good thing, to behave well creates also problems, as you know. In Lebanon, I'm Lebanon, <laughs> so you know that model. No? So people should, should get along better. So this model, this model, they they used what I mentioned before. This one, okay. But the problem is how how you give values, strength to different components. It's complicated. No? So depending on, on how I do it, I different I get different blocks. You know what I mean? It's difficult. You have to be a politician and understand what's happening, and the variables change, change, change rapidly. Okay, so this model has to do, in summary, with relations: neutral, friends, or enemies. Okay. Well, when we we publish a paper, when we analyze the Iraq, Iraqi war, there was a problem. We noticed. That the relation between Israel and the United States, Sarah, the relation is good, huh? They are friends, huh? Really? So they should follow. If the United States invades, then Israel, Israel should follow an invasion of Iraq. So we see troops from different countries, but not from Israel. At the same time, the relation between Iraq and, and the Israel was very bad. So it was a double force, a double trend for Israelis to send troops. The question is, why they didn't do it? Why? Hmm? Well, I, I can hear you well. No, okay, let me tell you. If you are enemy of Iraq, you are going to invade. If you are a friend of the United States, you also will invade. And Israel had both characteristics, okay? Was very important friend of, of the United States, at the same time, they didn't like Iraqi government. So there was a double force to invade. It happened. Why did it happen? Compl complicated, huh? Well, if you think in terms of politics and stuff, it's very close, you know, Muslims will retaliate, you know, against, against Israel. Also, Israel has Muslims or in Palestinians. It's complicated. So we, we said, that is a good example of 
three body relations. You guys who know physics, well, most of us know liberal physics, and we know that the force between two charged particles, okay, depends on the signs, okay? The force between electron, protons, charged particles goes like this, right? The force is proportional, right? To the charges, inversely proportional to the square of the distance, okay? This is a two-body force. It means if I have another force, another charge, let's call it Q3, the force between Q1 and Q3 is the same, same form. But this force doesn't depend on Q3, right? Like the gravity. It's very profound. Two body forces. Every particle interacts with the others, but it doesn't depend on where is the other. But in nuclear physics, I'm not, I don't know too much about nuclear physics. Nuclear physics, the nuclear force is very strong between protons and neutrons. It's a three body force. The force between you and me depends on where it is. Okay, so we claim that in social behavior, the two body forces are not enough. And this explains why Israel didn't enter the war, even though there were two forces sending Israeli troops to the Iraq. Okay, let's give some examples. Okay, the interaction between the lady and the guy could be very good, but is mediated by someone else, okay? As my father said, when you get married, you get married with the lady, with the family. And he said mango, in Mexico mango means a nice no? person. No? You get married with the mango, but also with, the, with all the things around, you know, inside. Here, for example, the relation has to do with, okay, other people. Actually, it's four body interaction, five body. Huh? See, the way I'm behaving now is different because we have many people. If we're only three here, I will be here. Yeah? So my relation with them depends on you. It's more or less obvious. But people, well, into mathematics is not so simple, right? Okay, let's see. Here, the interaction as in physics, it depends for a two-way case of the relative distance between H and M, okay? Not true. The relation between H and M depends on the angle or the distance between X. Right? Is it clear or not? So it's more complicated. If we only take two pairs, it's not very good. So in general, if when we, people work in networks and the three body is important, then you have to change. You have to change all your model. Instead of having just lines, links, you have triangles, okay? And Ali is here working on that. No, triangles are important. And quadrangles, etc. So in some cases, triangles are very important. And this is like a choreography, you know? For example, here we have, check, check these little drawings here. Okay? All together, one goes to the border, etc. No? It's all a choreography, you know? kind of complicated. You know? The position could mean the relation with among them, etc. No? So talking about Hamiltonians, when people do physics, they love Hamiltonians, which is, which comes from mechanics. Then you use it also in quantum mechanics. And I have here, instead of having 
the model I showed you before. This one, which is two body, I and J interacting. In general, we can have three bodies. Okay, the interaction J with index I, I, J, K depend on the three agents. So a general case could be to use normal two-body relations, the Hamiltonian here H plus another one. Okay, so who is a physicist here? Who is a physicist? One, two, three, computer science, majority mathematics, Others, as biology, political science. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what do you say? Secondly? Computer science and biology. Ah, interesting. And you? Ah, very good. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to go early in the morning. Uh, she can tell you a story. Ali came here the first day. Eh? It was Jeder. Jeder. And uh, he liked the first talk. And he invited me tomorrow to give another talk at the famous Lebanese University, the largest thing run at nine o'clock tomorrow. And here I'm giving three lectures, six hours, no, total. There, there I'm going to kind of condense huh? everything two hours. Huh? So here we are going more detail. Huh? So I have to take a taxi, get there at 8.30 or before, and then I will, I, I think it has been announced. Have you seen the announcement? Have you seen the announcement? You guys from Lima University? Yeah. And I have to go, you no, know, compress everything. Yeah? So uh, these topics are called social physics and econophysics. It's more clear. The one I gave before it was clear the connection between physics and economics was, yeah, was very obvious. Here it was obvious. Here, you know, you have to think a little bit about it. Yeah? For example, when I talk about the model of opinions, remember? Tolerance. Has to do with physics or not? Why? When they attract, why? Not really, because we are using Coulomb force. Huh? So it's the idea, the concept, yeah? they attract each other you know, in the space of opinions. Yeah? But actually, it's not physics. Just some ideas you know, are borrowed from physics. But physics is very tough because you have to calculate everything exactly, etc. So some of the ideas like attraction, repulsion could be used here, okay? And uh, okay, so this is the so in general when you have more enemies, you are in a worse position. The idea is always to be nice with everybody, avoid wars. Okay. I'm going to finish with a famous portrait from a Spaniard. This part. Well, here it is. Uh, okay. So as I mentioned. Three body interactions could be very important in social physics, social studies. But the problem is that how you measure, how you measure your propensities for interaction, no? It's complicated, no? Fossey, who knows the term Fossey? Who knows some Fossey sets theory? Have you heard about Fossey sets? Fossey mathematics? What is that? Well, let me give you a short example. Force is important because many of the measurements in social sciences, like political sciences, sociology, are fuzzy. How, how good is the government? How well do you behave? What is justice? How do you measure it? Let me give you an example. Force sets. Force means vague, not very objective sets. Let's define a set A of real numbers such as all are larger than number five. Which set is that? Do you know which set is that? No? Infinite, very large. If I write instead of real numbers, 
natural numbers will be all the integers, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Very well defined. Infinite, well defined. Let me change the set. This set is crispy, classical, as it was, you know. Let me change this set, and instead of writing here, x larger than five, let's write x much larger than number five. What's the set? Tell me the members. Tell me. Yeah, it's, it's defined, not very well. One million belongs to a set. 10,000? Eight? No. 10 to the 27? Well, what people do is very interesting, you know, because that's also with logic. When people talk, you know, we can also use fuzzy, fuzzy language. Let's measure it. For every element of our set, we want to define a membership value. Okay, membership. If the number is high, then you're really a member of a set. For example, 10 to the 40 belongs to a set? Yes. But the membership is better than 1,000. So for every, for every element, X, I'm going to give, give, give it a value between zero and one. If the value of the function is one, it means that it really belongs to the set. If it's near to zero, I'm not, I don't think so, okay? This guy is very good student, yeah? So you get 9.5 no, in the scale of 10. So that's, you know, so is he good? Yes. But if you get six, <clears throat> it's not very good. Huh? So we're qualifying. It's called, we can write, membership function, okay? Or belonging function. So if every element of the set has a function, I can write the function, I can, I can draw it, see? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, and the function goes, the dominion is a real numbers, and it goes from zero to one. So he's five, the number 30 has a value very high. So I'm, I'm drawing here the memory, memory chain function. The further I go to the right, I, it has a better value, okay? And asymptotically, asymptotically, it's approaching what? One. Okay, or 100%. One, it doesn't matter, that's the idea, right? But I can write another function. Instead of this, I'm very rich. I say, well, one million is nothing. 10 million is nothing. That's another function. It's not unique. If I ask you, what is the number of prime numbers between 10 and 20, you can you tell me. What is big? So this is a function. Memory function is, is given a qualification on this statement. Okay? So why I'm saying this because when we talk about propensities, we have to evaluate. You know, relations, good, negative. But this is not exact. Of course, what are the properties of that function? From the material point of view, what are the property of that plot? Tell me. It's continuous, bounded, hmm? bounded because one is the maximum value. What else? Mathematicians. Eh? Don't talk about derivatives, no, it doesn't matter. What else? The membership function is growing always, monotonous, growing, growing, growing. Be because if it, if 
and less favored than the one uh, no. The number twenty is that a member and the so we can do about algebra calculus. What is the view of mathematical So the idea is in social life, some things are not very Is it like? We agree. Yeah. Let me give you a read. You have to be around it. Around it. Okay, here. Or maybe I grab it. I have to keep the distance, you know? Mm -hmm. in, in distance, that is not. Is better? Well, guys, take a look. Look, look. Uh, we pay or whatever what fossey means fossey set no it's very very funny because only things you have done in mathematics algebra calculus can be done with fossey okay and it's errors yeah? there are more errors in your evaluations okay let me go to another one uh, one second uh, I, I think I think we have more or less half an hour more. Okay. Now, how we model? As you see here? Yes. F5. Yeah, it's on. And also, we money. Yeah, you can still use this one. Oh, thank you. Okay, now we'll sit down to stay closer. Okay, the question is very general. Why some people are more successful than others? Why some animals, you know, countries have better situations than others? There are many factors. Please tell me some of the possible factors that influence the life of societies, human beings, countries, with them. Well, Hmm? Intelligence. intelligence is very vague. I know what intelligence. In poor countries, have very intelligent people. Trump wasn't very intelligent, by the way. But he was smart to make money. Yeah? His father was rich. What else? In a general way. Upper. Huh? Upper what? Upper thing. What? Upper what? Upper thing. Upper thing. Opportunities, yes, opportunities, yes, opportunities, yes. People have, yeah. The, on what depends the opportunities? You know. For example, you guys have more opportunities than someone that live in a poor region of Bolivia or Cameroon. Well, in general, who has taken differential equations? Differential equations? You guys have taken differential equations? It's very important in the solution of a Equation with derivatives, what is important? Hmm? What? Right, right, right. Good. And you start here. Initial condition. It's very important for animals, for people, initial condition. As you said, opportunities, right? Okay. So I'm going to show you a model that has to do with a very general opportunities. No, it has to also be initial conditions. Well, in animals, okay, there are some hierarchies. Some animals are superior, you know, than others in a sense. Think what sense? 
Plato, okay, people sometimes it's, it's start with the Greeks, you know, it's kind of smart, you know, but the day society was very smart. Plato said that human beings have two souls, okay, and I'm not only one. So that the way he's playing why we are superior. <laughs> but a better explanation was given by who? Is, is, can you hear it? Oh, or a YouTube yeah. or Zoom? Yeah. But a better explanation was given by this English biologist. What is the meaning, what is the meaning of fitness there? Fitness meaning? What? That's right, after you the money. If that's well, you're in a better shape. Okay? So it was a very explanation that some religious or some, some ideas of religion. Okay? Actually, even within one species, there, there are fights, no? And competition. Sorry, one moment. I can advance. Well, so uh, in an only world of competition, you have to be fit, and it depends on your initial condition, opportunities. Here it is. So if you read carefully, even within species, there are social hierarchies, okay? Can you read that? If you see cats or hens, there's a picking order. The strongest animals eat first, and they leave the weakest after. It's terrible, no? Because it's a nonlinear effect. The weaker get get weakest, no? So let's try to model this in a very simple model, okay? With initial conditions. For example, Europe, as you know, conquered most of the world. Why Europe developed more than people in America or people in Africa? There are many explanations. What are, what are the explanations? There are many. For example, in Africa, in America, the continent goes like this. Whereas Asia, in Asia, you have the, the, the same climate, the same all over. Okay. So people in Asia and Europe were able to uh, domesticate animals, plant birds. I went to Biblos, you know, fantastic. In Biblos, you have a history, you know, together, you know. Bronze Age, you know, Romans, Ottoman Empire, you know. And, and at the same time, America was very underdeveloped. Okay. Supposedly, the uh, uh, people in America came from the state of Paris, you know, from Alaska, from Asia, on the way down. Anyway, so the initial conditions were better probably in this country. How classes form? Well, let's see what the type of a higher sociology is about transformation. <laughs> Unfortunately, humanity develops in a very ugly way with conquering, you know, etc. Here we have uh, some blocks of Mexico and Peru, or the Incas were, uh, as a question of time. There was a huge amount of people dying. What cast means? Castas, what it means? Yes. Mixed. Okay. We call it in Spanish mestizo. You know? okay. Mixture of Indians and so, due to war and also to the diseases, yeah, 
what price for the Europeans? Maybe what I don't. So in society, usually it was very difficult to climb to improve yourself. A typical example is labor. Okay. But nowadays, of course, if you study, you have more opportunities. Right? Everyone. Well, let's talk about the model, simple model, to more or less in a real way, model lead with a computer. We have agents, M agents. Oops. That move one step, a time, one step, A, no, okay. In a grid. Okay. And it's a tradition model. When two people, two agents, become two persons, but they get to very far. When they collide, what do you think will happen in our model? They fight. Good, good. You're right. You're a good boxer. You're, you're strong. No? You like fighting? Boxer. No? Okay. They fight. No? Very good. So, following the model of interactions, people will fight. And will record the history of fight that they won or lose. Plus one, if you win the fight. Minus, if you lost. Okay? Like in any sport, you have a game in soccer. And the idea of the model is that when they interact, the probability of winning your next match, your next fight, depends on your score. Okay, so I mean, all of them have the same probability of winning or losing. They start moving, you know, interacting. And if you win a battle, a fight, it's not, it's not always you're going to win the next one. But it's not probably that you win the next one. Okay? So the initial conditions are important. The initial condition was important in the sense that you have more opportunities if you were born in a nice house with good parents, went to school, etc. Okay? Or in a country, you have a water, good resources. Okay. So it's a fight, right? So we find that when we analyze the many interactions, those agents that won the first battle were always in a better, almost always in a better situation. Okay. This model was made from some French. But we improve it, the model. And we add better places, instead. strategic places, attractors. What do you mean? Randomly, the blue dots, what do you, what do you mean? Water, maybe higher mountain, more oil, gold. So the idea is to see what happens when we have inhomogeneous places, okay? And the rules of the movement of our little agents in our cartoon, in our toy model, the rules were changed. If you reach a blue region, you stay there, okay? Like a castle. It has to be water, very, very, situ very, very climate, right? And we developed the whole dynamic of how many interesting things. Okay. What we find is a, that inequality depends on the density of important sites. But we find this cacique means cacique means like a leader, no? Or a pack, no? Someone who is exploiting the others. Yeah? What, what we found that in some areas, people stay fighting around one rich spot. 
and they didn't see the other one. So the per capita distribution was very bad. Some people tried to fight some agents for one of the strategic sites, and other good sites were alone. Why do you think it happened? What's the problem with the rules that it didn't work very well? What do you think? You've got four good sites, spots, and four people. Everyone should have one spot, every distribution, but it didn't happen. No more. Well, I told you that the agents were moving only one step at a time. No more. So the problem is that they didn't have enough information. They couldn't see other blue dots. So a lack of information caused that distribution per capita was very bad. Here we have four agents fighting for only one strategic spot. So economists, you know, they teach us, it's wrong, they teach us that people have their models, they have all information. And they are smart enough to buy the same, the best mobile, to invest, etc. And we know that in real life, that's enough. Some people have more opportunities, they have uh, more information. Yeah. So this model of competition can be applied to animals, to countries, etc. And we discover some interesting things, but this is the most obvious, huh? that if you have enough information, you get stick, get stuck to one problem, right? But we have a student, you know, who had a girlfriend, you know, they broke up. And he was always saying, oh, she's the only woman in the world, you know, she's the best, etc. I said, well, forget it, eh? Get another one. But it was a significant problem. It was always with 10 person and couldn't understand that there were more people there, no? Emotionally, you know, was attached to that person. So lack of information, lack of food. Well, that's a significant problem. That happened, eh? So from simple models, we can learn a lot of things, okay? Now, let me pass really quick because uh, yeah, right, a little bit later, like half an hour. Yeah. Okay, four. So I have the 15 minutes. Because I want, I want to stress also the, the cultural stuff that was very nice and very okay. sophisticated. From the guys from the Lima University, the only one like I said, you know, I'm from a university, and very large. We have um, 350,000 students, larger than you. Mm, then you go to the more minutes to explain to the Lebanese university students, the public one, the model that they missed. Oh, here it is. So for to understand how culture expands, we define for each person or culture, we define a vector, an arrangement, okay? Here we have F equal to three, only three components. And each component, we have different, could be languages, religion, ways of thinking, political ideologies, okay? And the idea is that randomly, for example, the agent, the red agent interacts with one of the neighbors, okay, see? And if they share some features, then they interact. If not, nothing happens. For example, they both like soccer, okay? And this guy, this guy, the orange, orange and the blue one meet, they share the same sport. And then he invites one of them to have a Chinese food and both like Chinese food, okay? And if they are rich, tell him, okay, you got to go to Mexico and then he learns some Spanish okay? or Arabic. And then little by little, those agents start to converge to have almost all the 
cultural characteristics the same. Okay. And what I like of this presentation, of this idea, is the following dynamics. Okay. Here we have only three components with two different values, zero and one. And with colors, we identify the different cultures. It could be also languages. Like the first sentence gives you the grammar, the second they'll give you the, the words. For example, I just learned that Farsi, the language that people in, in Iran speak, most of the Iranians have lots of Arabic, Arabic words. Okay. And Urdu in Pakistan have uh, the same grammar, practically that Hindi in India. So we could apply this to many other things, you know, like political ideas, normal culture, right? And uh, with this mechanism, the initial conditions I presented were, for example, in this part, okay, a lot of colors. Remember that each color represents a very independent culture. But we start making interaction for different pixels. And with time, we obtain a situation where one culture, in this case, the red one, dominates. That shows a convergence to a kind of global polarization. Global in the sense that one, a couple of cultures are taking most of the cultures, destroying, destroying or making them very small. Very small. See? Do you see it? So let's think about North Africa, the Middle East here. There were many languages, you know, and become more homogeneous. In America, there were a lot of languages and even religions before the Spaniards and the Portuguese came to America. And with time, with exposure, with pressure. Uh, the culture became more homogeneous. Okay, so this model can be applied for many other things. Okay, when you have people that behave this in the same way, then we can show that with time we have a dominant culture, but that depends on the variation. Q, Q, in this case is two values, zero and one. But we have many, many possibilities. It's more difficult that all agents converge to the same culture. Here we have a plot in the horizontal axis of the possible characteristics Q. And in the vertical axis, we have the normalized size of the dominant or more, most important culture. In this case, it's black. See, normalized to one because we divide the number of pixels in the area is max. Okay, and the idea is that uh, it can be shown that if Q is above Q critical, okay, the red one, and the right, then it's very difficult that just a culture dominates the whole scenario. When you have more wealth, when you have a more complex a number of different features below, in this case, Q, critical, okay? If it has less, it's very easy to get dominated. But if you have more features, then the competition is not very clear and you have a dominant culture, okay? So I'm just showing you that some of the ideas, the society, culture, economics, can be modeled in a simple way with these kind of models. The idea is that you have to know some computing yeah, and be able to understand what you're doing and change this model, for example. As I, as I as mentioned before, there are some cultures that are dominant, okay? Due to military, cultural uh, superiority, for example, yeah? okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please join me in thanking Professor Marcelo for giving the talk, which went to our uh, economic physics lecture from uh, Saturday. We still have one more lecture on Thursday, and uh, we'll finish up with that. All right, thank you. And uh, 
we can break for the coffee and have oh a yeah sure sure there. so please join me thank you very nice